Hey guys, Chip here. So check this out. Imagine the effort it takes to create a scene like the one you're looking at now. Not to mention the incredible horsepower and time it takes to render such a scene. My guess is this scene represents millions of polygons with tons of texture maps. So maybe your rig is big enough to handle it, but my guess is it could be a struggle for many. So what if I told you that you're only looking at a few polygons and less than a dozen texture maps? Well, that's true. I will get into details in just a second, but for now, I just want you to appreciate how crazy cool it is to create such complexity with only a few polys. So let's go back a bit. I remember seeing this crazy W Parallax stuff, the stuff that you're watching right now. And of course, it was available primarily for Cinema 4D, Maya, and 3D Max. And it's all based on OSL, or Open Shader Language which if any of you are so technically inclined, you understand that OSL, while somewhat supported, is really not that great in Blender. I dug a bit deeper to try and learn more about what was going on to learn about this cool tech and how it is created. And I have to say, it's some pretty fancy math mumbo jumbo stuff for sure. So I did what I do a lot. I contacted the smartest node person alive, or at least that I know, and asked him if something like this is possible. That person is named Gabe, and he's 17 years old, and he's truly brilliant. One of the top node masters in all of the Blender universe. So Gabe told me, yeah, he could do this. And so we spent the next couple months fine-tuning a node group to do all of this using Blender's shader nodes. And it works great, right inside of Blender. EV2. We call this KitOps Parallax. And we currently have a system to build these one plane wonders automatically at the click of a couple buttons right within Blender. But that's not what this video is about. What I want to show you is the magic that is behind this new shader. So next I contacted the W Parallax guys because they have the best implementation of this technology I've seen. And we decided to work together to release three specific packages for only the Blender community. We've converted over 90 W Parallax rooms into three KitOps K-Packs, each with 30 or more individual inserts. So let's take a look at them and how you can use them and modify them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we use these new W Parallax items. So when you first get them, you'll want to install KitOps Pro or KitOps Free. Obviously the free version works just fine and it's free. So if you're looking for instructions on how to install that and install the actual K-Packs, you'll find them where you purchased the W Parallax K-Packs. When you get them, you'll get a specific K-Pack. And if you get all three, you'll get all three K-Packs, but all of them come with this one called Windows. We're gonna talk about Windows here in just a little bit. But first let's just jump into Office. So what you can do is scroll down and just pick any one of the actual inserts that you want to add. And as you can see, there's night and day versions for each one of them. So select the object that you want to add them to, and then hit Add Insert, and you can just drag them around and place them however you want. And once they're placed, you can see that they work just perfectly. Let's take this and let's scale it up a little bit more. Like that and we'll move it over here like so. So let's go ahead and add another one. So I'll just go in here and let's add, let's say a big large one. We'll select our object and we'll add the insert. And you can see that we'll just pop that right over here. And let's just add kind of a medium one. Like so. And we can move our object or our building around like that. So now you can see that what we have here are three planes. In fact, let's just go into wireframe view and you can see these are just individual planes. That's all they are. They just have this special parallax texture on them. Now I'm looking at them in EV right now, but I can also look at them in cycles and they look just great as well. So that's pretty cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a window surface on them. Now you don't have to do this, but you may want to. So the way that works is you'll just come into the actual windows room right here and I have them set for one by one, two by one, and three by one. And these are all set as one by one, two by one, and three by one. So I can just grab any of them. I'll grab the one by one and I can obviously place it on here. And uh, to do that, I'll have to remove the kit up props for this object. If I have kit ops pro, I can just turn on face snapping mode and just go add insert and pop it right on there. And it'll just, it'll just work, right? And there we have it. So you can see there's a reflection jumping in there. Let's go ahead and scene world. You'll see it maybe it looks a little better. So I can select the two by one and with KitOps Pro, I can just say place on selected insert and add the insert and that works fine. If you don't have KitOps Pro, what you want to do is remove KitOps props and then you can basically select this object right here and then just go in and we're going to add the insert to that object. Let's say we choose something other than this one. We can say the one by one and we'll add the insert there 
and I'm going to put it here. You'll notice that we're not quite in the center yet. And so what I want to do is look at this object right here and just see what the, what the dimensions are of that object or what the placement is. Like, for instance, I know that the X is, is here. So I might just go ahead and control that, copy that, and then grab this and paste and set that. And then we'll go to the Z dimension, control C and select this, and then paste. And then under Kit Ops, We'll just go in here and we hit these two buttons right here and it just moves everything, scales everything so it's right. So there you have it. So now we have windows in front of all of these. And these windows are pretty cool because they will actually work very nicely both in Eevee and in Cycles. So let's go ahead and look at them in Cycles. There we go. So another thing that we're going to want to talk about here is scaling these. So these are scaled, if you look at here, they're set to 1 and 1.5 depth. And this is to 1. And I can actually hit the S button because I may find that this one needs to be scaled up a little bit to match the ones below it. So that's fine too. You just, you know, just hit the S button and scale them. You can also adjust the depth of the room, which is this Z dimension. So you can move this in and out to scale the room this way as well, right? So they may not be, you may want them to be deeper or less deep. And so you can do that here. Now let's look at the shader material. So as we look at this, we have the room depth here, which is where we start out at. And then we have these cutouts. All of these images have two cutouts. One of them is on the front plane, so you really can't mess with that. But the second, this one right here, you can. So I'm gonna move it back and forth and you can start to see how that works. And uh, you can adjust that how you like. The other thing you can do in here is that as you can see in the cutout, you may see there's a little white fringe around, around some objects. Most of them this shouldn't be, but if there is, there's a cutout alpha fall off right here that you can adjust. You can also adjust a color tone in the image too. So let's say you have a very blue scene, so you can come in and just start to basically push some of this stuff to, to the blue color space. And then you can copy and paste between this and other rooms. So you can adjust the color toning as well. So that just gives you some idea. One last thing I'll show you that's kind of cool is, let's delete this. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn off that and turn off, turn off all the lighting. And I'll set the lighting up so that it's using the scene lighting. And I'll go into our world and I'm going to actually turn that off too. So now we have nothing. And let's go into this material right here. We're going to leave... Uh, Hey, we'll delete this one, X, delete that one. And we'll just grab this this one, and I'm going to shift D, X, and move it over here. And because I want it to be different, I'm just going to hit this button right here. So I'll make a copy of that. Now, notice the one is set to color, and the other is set to BSDF. So I'm going to set this one to BSDF, and you'll see that it's dark. And if I say shift A, and let's add a light, a sunlight, and I'm going to give it 50. Okay, so I've got sunlight now that's lighting the scene. And you can see it's lighting straight down. I can adjust the light. And notice how it's actually affecting this room in here. So this room can work with the light in a scene if you want by just, you know, just adjusting the light to where you want it. And you can see that, you know, if I adjust it, you know, completely on the back side, you're not going to see anything in the room. Vice versa, if I move it onto the front side, you'll see everything. If I shine it up so that it's more towards the ceiling, you're going to get more light on the ceiling. So that's kind of a cool feature, too. I uh, thought that was pretty special that Gabe added that. Anyway, that's about it. So jump on over to Blender Market or to Gumroad. Grab yourself a copy. Uh, they're on sale sometimes right now. I know they are, and I'm not sure when they will be on sale again. Definitely worth checking out. I hope you're as excited about this technology as I am, and thanks for watching. We'll see you online.